Piggy is a movie about the dangers of bullying and how it can result in you being kidnapped by a large angry man who likes to throw cake bars at women. Piggy is also a movie made for a 4 by 3 aspect ratio because screw your fancy screens, while being entirely made in Spanish because screw your fancy English. The movie begins by introducing us to a teenager named Sarah working behind the counter at her family's butcher shop. She looks out of the window, envious of a group of other teenagers, Maka, Rocky, Claudia and Pedro, as she wishes that that was something she was able to experience, when in reality they brutally mock her for her weight and her family business. Two of the girls, Claudia and Rocky, enter the shop to pick up something for Claudia's mother. And although you can tell that Claudia somewhat knows the family, the tension between the teenagers implies that she'd rather not. And after they leave, Sarah opens her phone to see that the girls had posted a picture on copyright-free Instagram of Sarah and her parents calling them the free little pigs because someone clearly wasn't disciplined enough as a child. Or too much. I can't really tell. The next day, before most people are up and doing things, Sarah takes the opportunity to head down to the pool in hopes of there being no one around because apparently her breaststroke is just that embarrassing. But while she's getting ready in the changing rooms, she hears a few splashes outside in the pool before finding herself startled by a man emerging from the water doing his best fish impression. After seeing the rather wet man in the water below, she then notices that Maka, Rocky and Claudia are coming towards her and they're looking for someone to project their pitiful existence onto. And just like the nice, respectable young girls that they are, Maka and Rocky begin to make pig noises because apparently they've got quite the vocal fascination with reproducing farmland sounds. You can see that Claudia is clearly in two minds about the whole thing and that she's not entirely on board with the constant bullying and belittling, but I guess the idea of brutally beating someone down is just too much fun to resist. Desperately wanting to get away, and with nowhere to go except down, Sarah dives beneath the water as the mysterious, slightly damp man gets into his van and leaves. And once she emerges from the water, the girls proceed to place a net over her head, holding her in place and causing her to panic as they call her a pig whale. Apparently not the brightest bunch when it comes to their insults or their attempts to not accidentally drown someone, Sarah manages to get away by once again diving under the water. But this time, while below, she swims right past the lifeguard with his hands tied behind his back, held in place by a block of cement. The lifeguard, who was previously spotted by the moist man, as he inappropriately touched the waitress. Resulting in the pair of men playing the world's longest game of how long can you hold your breath. Without noticing the really inefficient pool floaty, once Sarah emerges from the water, she sees as the girls steal all of her belongings and run away. And once again, you can clearly see that Claudia is hesitant about the whole brutally bullying someone just because they're different thing, but once again does absolutely nothing to stop it because apparently her two annoying teenage friends, whose idea of fun is to completely strip a person of all of their self-worth, are just that great to be around. With none of her belongings, Sarah is forced to run down the road in her swimsuit, terrified by the idea of being spotted by anyone, when unfortunately for her, a car of men approach from behind, and because apparently this small Spanish town consists of literally the worst people ever, she's accosted as they follow behind her, and at one point they even proceed to get out and assault her because they've got really small genitals. And after all of the members of the small PP club get bored and drive away, Sarah eventually comes across an idle white van, the white van that the particularly moist man drove away in earlier. But as she walks past it, not looking behind her, we see Mako emerge from the bushes, covered in blood, as it appears that she's just had a rather unfortunate run-in with these things called consequences for her actions before the man emerges from behind her and drags her into his van. The van then drives ahead and stops in front of Sarah as the man just kind of stares at her in his window, looking as if he's not quite sure if he wants to eat her or propose to her. Suddenly, a bloodied handprint is seen in the back of the van, a bloodied handprint that belongs to Claudia. The man begins to emerge from the van, and Sarah, not quite sure what's about to happen to her, quickly deciding that she could really cool down right about now, suddenly begins to wet herself. But with the man making it rather evident that she's in no danger, he drops a towel on the floor for her and drives away, leaving Sarah standing there waving back at him, as this rather strange situation involving peeing her pants, being intensely stared at, and a couple of kidnapped young women has just occurred. Sarah heads home and begins to shower off the impromptu shower she already gave herself, but as soon as she sees her mother, before she's given the opportunity to open up about the absolutely horrific ordeal that's just occurred, her mother immediately begins shouting at her and commanding her to do things, before Sarah has the slightest chance to say anything. It's a constant cycle for Sarah 
Out of the home, it's everyone else, and back at home, it's her mother. There's no escape from the constant torture that she's subjected to, for nothing other than the fact she's a little bit heavier and a bit weird. And if the internet has taught me anything, it's that that's a lot of people's idea of a really good time. After stress eating a cake bar from her secret stash, she checks her laptop to see that Claudia had also posted the picture captioned Free Little Pigs. She then begins to cry, but her sadness quickly evolves into hatred, and she says F them. Sorry, I can't say that word, my mom will tell me off. The next day, after another mundane shift of working at the butcher shop, just this time with slightly less bullying, she's sent to the nearby store by her father to buy a replacement light for the display section, because that's some good looking meat. And once she's in the shop, she then proceeds to cut off a bracelet she was wearing, because screw that piece of jewellery in particular. Shortly followed by a good Samaritan, almost immediately picking it up, because littering is bad. And after she emerges from the shop, she bumps into another one of her bullies, her mother, as apparently something's happened at the nearby pool, and she absolutely must go and see. Being followed by the man in the white van, hopefully now slightly less moist, they arrive to find that the lifeguard was discovered at the bottom of the pool, and unfortunately for him, he lost the game. With there being no sign of the waitress anywhere, the police then find out that Sarah was in the area around the time of all of this occurring, but instead, thinking quickly on her feet, begins to lie and say that she decided to go to the river instead. But as her mother continues to push back, saying that she always goes to the pool, either in an attempt to create a convincing story, or reaching her breaking point, or maybe perhaps both, Sarah finally cracks and begins screaming at her mother, as she says she didn't want to come to the pool, because she's relentlessly bullied by everyone and they call her Piggy. And to either punish her daughter, or to fix what's causing the bullying, later that night, as Sarah is hungry at the dinner table, her mother hands her nothing but a plate full of salad, and tells her that that's all she's going to be eating from now on. It then cuts to a woman, restrained to a chair and gagged, as we see White Van Moist Man in the same room as her. The restrained woman happened to be there during the argument between Sarah and her mother, and once they left, she proceeded to make a rude comment about Sarah's weight. A rude comment that it would appear our wet friend overheard, and decided to do something about. It appears that he's not exactly fond of people mistreating others, and responds to said mistreatment with a little mistreatment of his own. Claudia's mother then arrives at Sarah's family home, begging Sarah for any information, as the pair apparently used to be friends. Yeah, friends before your daughter turned into a demon. But after finding out that Claudia has been horrifically picking on Sarah, Sarah's mother immediately kicks the woman out of the house, because who cares about your daughter anyway? Just get a new one. After the rather emotional confrontation, Sarah heads upstairs to stress eat her favourite go-to cake bar. But immediately after discovering that she has none left, one is then thrown through her bedroom window by her slightly psychotic, crazy-eyed teenage girl dismemberer after he stalked her in the store earlier, after she was questioning if she should spend the light bulb money on them. Ah, how romantic. Wanting to find her phone, as it was stolen along with all of her belongings, thinking that perhaps it could lead her to the whereabouts of the missing teenagers, she takes her father's phone, heads back out to the spot where they were taken, and begins using it to call her own. But instead of finding her phone, she finds an incredibly large and dangerous looking bull that just kinda goes, nah, and walks away. After that rather close call with the bull, while searching around in the darkness, she ends up finding blood splattered across the ground, as well as a nail that appears to have been ripped off as its original owner desperately attempted to crawl away from a slightly damp man heading in their direction. Like a deranged version of Hansel and Gretel, Sarah follows the blood trail further into the woods and discovers more items belonging to the girls. And eventually, she does hear the noise of her ringtone, but suddenly the man appears behind her. But before anything happens, they both hear the sound of an approaching engine and quickly hide as the families of Maka, Rocky and Claudia use an app to track their phones. And while hiding behind a wall, as fireworks erupt into the night sky from nearby festivities, the man begins touching Sarah's lips, as apparently he's really interested in what she had for dinner. And just as it looks as the pair are about to kiss, the man runs off with the other girls' phones that are still on for some reason. While searching the area for the girls, the families discover the body of Maka, because apparently this guy drove away in his moist mobile to for some reason bring them right back to the exact same spot he took them from. Makes sense to me now why he didn't get rid of their phones. Some of that water must have leaked into his brain. The screaming from the mother alerts the nearby police officers, who just so happen to be in the area looking for a runaway bull, instead of, you know, 
the missing teenagers, and after making it out of the area and back to her home without being spotted, Sarah heads up to her bedroom and using a stuffed animal, proceeds to do things to herself that God wouldn't approve of. Because there's nothing that gets your gears moving, quite like a guy who lives alone in the woods, kills teenage girls and doesn't have a basic understanding of technology. But as she's busy getting busy, suddenly someone throws a pebble at her window to get her attention. But it's not the handsome, cake-providing, slightly psychotic high schooler loving man, it's Pedro, Claudia's boyfriend. He's confronting her about lying about the pool incident because Claudia, being the amazing friend that she is, sent a video of the bullying incident to their group chat because nothing screams a fun time quite like attempting to drown someone. Once again, thinking on her feet, she rather smartly diverts the attention away from the real reason and says that the only reason she really lied was because she was incredibly embarrassed about the constant bullying and didn't want the entire town to find out that she was the laughing stock, which I'm sure is also partly true. And Pedro, seeming genuinely empathetic towards her, says that he still wants her to come forward with the fact that she was there because he's worried that he's going to be accused of doing something. But Sarah puts his mind at ease and tells him that he ever was accused, then she would come forward and tell the truth. Well, a version of the truth. And while out in the street, Pedro is then confronted by Claudia's mother, saying that the waitress has now been found dead, just as Sarah's mother nearby realises that the towel she brought home wasn't hers, it's Claudia's and it's covered in blood. With her coming over to investigate the commotion, Pedro blurts out that Sarah admitted to being there and Claudia and Sarah's mother begin fighting in the street while the man watches patiently from a distance, wondering if he can hit Sarah in the head with another cake bar. After the altercation in the street, Sarah is once again questioned by the police, but this time admits to being at the pool and eventually tells them the girls were picking on her and almost drowned her while doing so. But she insists that that was the end of it. They stole her belongings and she was forced to run home with nothing but a swimsuit on. Being able to talk her way out of it once again, Sarah and her mother return home and we see that the man has now entered her room and has just been caught by her father as he inspects her underwear drawer which the man responds to by hitting the father over the head and choking and stomping on him. With the man still upstairs and Sarah and her mother downstairs and unaware, they begin to argue once again as the mother brings up that she found Claudia's towel covered in blood. And just as she's about to slap Sarah across the face, the man grabs her arm and hits her across the face instead because old people are just so punchable. Sarah looks down to see her mother laying on the floor bleeding from her nose, but is quickly pulled back by the man and taken out of the house. And as they're walking down the street, the guys who harassed her in the car the other day are there and begin shouting things at the pair of them. So as revenge for harassing her in the car, the man proceeds to harass them with his car and attempts to violently run them over, causing them to leap over railings and injure themselves below. As they're driving away into the night, he opens the glove box to hand her her favourite cake bar, before being far too concerned with what's not directly in front of him, causing the car to crash directly into the runaway bull, who's rather ironically not running but standing in the middle of the road, almost resulting in the horn piercing Sarah's skull. The next morning, Sarah wakes up from her non-consensual nap to find herself in an old abandoned slaughterhouse. Except it isn't entirely abandoned, as she finds both Rocky and Claudia strung up and tied to the hooks used to transport the animal carcasses. She immediately tries to free the girls and right after removing Claudia's gag, she begins to chastise Sarah, shouting at her and asking, why didn't you tell anyone? Because apparently she's far more concerned with telling her off than actually getting out of here. And after calling Sarah an idiot, she's thrown across the room out of frustration right before they hear the man return, forcing Sarah to hide, where she immediately proceeds to stand on a broken shard of glass. Sarah watches as the man enters the room and slices Rocky out of frustration as he desperately wants to know where Sarah has gone. And after finding her hiding, he activates a mechanism that drops her into a pit below with the remains of another cut up woman as if he's got his very own builder girl workshop. But as soon as he actually gets Sarah, he makes it obvious that she's not in any danger at all as he then proceeds to comfort her by hugging her and saying that he's not going to hurt her. But the two girls on the other hand is an entirely different story. With them both still needing to be dealt with, the man hands Sarah a knife and tells her that they're going to finish this together like the little pair of romantic lovebirds that they are. To which Sarah responds by immediately trying to stab the man but failing miserably. And because apparently, second to getting nice and wet, his other hobbies include grabbing women by the arm and hitting them in the face. That gives Claudia the opportunity to kick him, giving Sarah the chance to get him twice in the gut with the knife before he accidentally sets the gun off, knocking himself to the floor. 
and as Sarah lays there in a daze, a bracelet suddenly drops onto the ground, as well as dripping blood. Perhaps the other half to a friendship bracelet that we saw Sarah remove back in the store. Friendship bracelets that the pair continued to wear, despite the awful ways Claudia had been treating her. Sarah then looks up to see that Claudia could really use a hand, before she runs at the man and gives him the forbidden hickey by biting three chunks out of his neck. After the man falls to the floor and bleeds out, she then begins to cry her eyes out as she doesn't want him to die immediately after causing him to die, followed by Rocky rather stupidly saying, What have you done, Piggy? Saved your life. That's what she's done. To which Sarah responds by immediately turning towards her and firing the gun. She then proceeds to aim it at Claudia as she begs for her life and tells her that she's sorry for everything that she's done, but Sarah fires anyway. But as Sarah walks away from the slaughterhouse, rather appropriately filled with a bunch of slaughter, we see that both Rocky and Claudia are in fact still alive, as Sarah decided to shoot their restraints and not their silly little faces. The movie then comes to its end, with Sarah walking down the road, alone and covered in blood, where she is then found by Pedro passing by on his motorcycle, as he takes her back to town to get help. So before we finish things up, I'd like to just give a massive shout out to all of the YouTube members and patrons. The people who every month continue to support the channel, despite YouTube making it incredibly obvious that they're not exactly fond of the type of content I make. But as well as just generally supporting the channel, if you were interested in becoming a YouTube member or a patron yourself, you get some nice bonuses like getting access to the private Discord server, where you then get access to uncensored versions of all videos going forward. So starting off with this week's new YouTube signups, a massive thank you to Fox and Owl, Daniel Bratain, Lucas, Gert Kneib, Mr. Devneels, Sharad Hearn, Spencer Westmoreland, Mitchell Porter, Aidan Maines, Jack Kelly, Robbie P, Mr. G Boss, Gilhelm Rodriguez, Timul Meyer, Angel Mayorga, Cal Ballinger, Black Salami, Finn Ona, Ginny, Marcel, Tai Tai Cool Est Kid, and Julie Not 666. And heading over to this week's new Patreon signups. A massive thank you to Clinton Kanoho, Tipsy Big Boy, Nathaniel Mello, Dasani Haynes, Tolga Ravkan, Enzo Fisher, Atomo, Omar Garcia, Enrico Lepler, Nathan Rubble, Frankie Woolsey, Disabled Tech, Maxime, Annie Sarian, Chris Hall, Org Sirius, Elisa S, Jerome Johnson, Moraine, Emily King, Tristan Morgan, Tristan McHale, Oliver, Maz, Tristan Brank, Frank Castle, Adam, Jaden Campbell, Victor Baldwin, Alsa Diaz, D. Burks, Here Comes Dry Dad, French Canadian Weirdo, Amber, Rocky, Ivan Constantinidis, Callum Stapleton, Dizzy D, Tony, Luke Baxter, Chris, Carrie Thompson, I Guess You're on Keto Duty, John Stowell, Cameron Tarkala, Matthew McKenzie, Matthew Lowry, and Henry Fowler. So once again, a massive thank you to all of the YouTube members and patrons, and a big shout out to everyone else for watching.